door tool in ArchiCAD 10 has been improved greatly and has got a whole heap more flexibility. The door tool is located right here in the toolbox under the design section. So as soon as we left mouse click on that, all the toolbar in the info box gets propagated with all its settings. First of all, if we double click on that icon, we open the door default settings palette and over here we've got hundreds of doors we can choose from and they're all parametric and we'll go over this palette in a second so there's tons of doors in there and next over here we have this little icon here that's often forgotten about this is if we want to place an empty door so if I left mouse click on that it's an empty door we can see the size of it is 1800 by 2100 so if I just left mouse click on there and go to the 3D window we can see there's my empty door I might just choose another door quickly push OK I'm going to get rid of that door there by going Control Z over here we have a method of scrolling through all the doors that are in the loaded library at the moment without opening the actual main palette placing a door we can place it from the center or from the edge I'll just illustrate each one of those so first of all from the center I just go to a wall you can only place a door in a wall then I left mouse click when I have a Mercedes cursor doesn't matter which Mercedes cursor a thick one or a thin one and then I click left mouse click once and then the eye comes up and the eye is asking me which way do I want the door to swing so if I want the door to swing down towards here I left mouse click there once or swing the other way I left mouse click once and put my cursor there exactly the same out the other way and then finally like that if I go control Z four times or Apple Z we undo that then we can place it from the edge if I place it from the edge I left mouse click once and this time without clicking further Archicad's asking me which side do I want the door to go on when I've clicked on that cursor so it's anchored from that center point so if I wanted to be on this side of that anchor point I left mouse click there once now we're confronted with the same dialogue which way do I want the door to swing if I want it to swing up this way I left mouse click up that way once again if I left mouse click down here which side first maybe this side and then left mouse click down here so that's where the door will swing just a brief trap that I've seen some people do if I left mouse click once once I have chosen the side I want the door to go to if I left mouse click once and for example if I wanted the door to swing down this way almost exaggerate that movement I've seen some people just click there and then the door goes to the left hand side of the center it doesn't go the way they want it to and um, so it's not a bad idea to exaggerate where you want the door to swing so move your mouse right down here and then click again to complete that function then if we quickly push F4 on the Mac and F5 on the PC to go to the 3D window to have a look at that see those doors there next to place a door accurately I'm just going to remove all these doors and if I want to place a door accurately I would probably use the side insertion method and to do this try and zoom into the area you want to place from so it's easier to be accurate so I'm going to place the cursor without clicking just roll it over to a point that I know where I want to insert the door from so from this particular point I go X one meter plus enter once I push enter I can see that I want the door to be inserted this side and I want it to swing back towards the wall so that's one way of doing it after a door has been inserted to actually select it while you're still on the door tool just hold the shift key down I like picking up a door from the end of a door swing because it's easy to select there although you can select it by rolling your mouse over the door as well which used to be a bit more difficult in previous versions so I guess this is a bit of a legacy from being an older ArchiCAD user once I've got it selected I can just move it in any direction and with the tracker palette coming up I can just type in any figure there and type one meter so it's moved over a meter the other thing I can also do is if I want to place it exactly one meter from say the inside corner of this room I drag it over to there just drop it there select it again start moving it type it in one meter and type OK so now that's one meter from that corner next I'm just going to 
open the door pallet and work through the pallet. Once the pallet's open we can see that we have a very graphical interface that is broken up into three areas. Firstly our loaded libraries where all our doors are, the actual doors that are in the loaded library and then all the settings to the right hand side here. I can also change the way we look at these as well but I'm just going to leave it the stock standard way. I can also find doors so if I wanted to just type door find and then it'll find all the doors in there. Now there are literally hundreds of doors in here and that's multiplied by the fact that they're all parametric as well. So a brief explanation of this let's just say I'm going to select door 1 and as I select it over here on the right hand side here up here we can see that it what it looks like in floor, floor plan elevation, hidden line, shaded view and a photo render view of the object. We also have the empty opening button here and once we place it there's a flip button which is greyed out at the moment so after we insert a door and we wanted to flip it this would become highlighted and I could actually just grab it and push the flip button. When placing a door in a wall we have three options either to make it line up with the edge of the wall to place it with a sill or place it with a reveal. Now if I click either of these two options this dimension becomes highlighted but when I place it on an edge it's greyed out. There's the geometry method once again so there's two points where we can define that. Next we can open the parameters tab and in this section here we have all the textual information about this door. Over here we have the size of the door so it's 900 wide by 2 meters high and we can actually choose the anchor. We can anchor the sill to the bottom of the wall to a story. We can also anchor the header to the base of a wall and header to a particular story. This is where we select the story that we can anchor it to. Now I'm just going to leave that as it is at the moment. Over here we can change the height of the sill and the header and over here we can change the subfloor thickness. With the opening plane if we have an angled wall we can associate it to the angle of the wall or we can just make it vertical. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. In addition to the text type input we have a new interface in version 10 under internal door settings. Now over here we have a number of pages that we can flick through either just by the drop down menu or I can scroll through them by checking the arrow tools. Now on each page we also have two sub menus, one that deals with dimensions, one that deals with materials. So at the moment I'm going to leave it on dimensions and talk about the way ARCHICAD dimensions. One of the things I commonly get asked is does ARCHICAD dimension doors or the hole in the wall? Now we actually have both. So with the nominal opening button unchecked we can see that the width and height of the opening in the wall is 902 meters. We can see it over here as well. The unit width is 900, unit height is 2 meters, but the actual door leaf is 846 by 1982. They can be changed obviously later on in the dialogue, but if I go to the floor plan, we can see in floor plan the hole is 900 by 2 meters, and we can see that in elevation as well. So if I go back to my door settings and now if I check the nominal opening I haven't changed the width and height but now they become the width and height of the actual door leaf. So now it's changed the wall hole to 960 by 2030 so it's obviously got a 30 mil tolerance on each side of the door leaf and the wall hole has a 30 mil tolerance to the height so if I just push OK and have a look at that again, we can see that now it's 960 and in elevation we can see it's 960 by 230 as well. So now if I jump back to that palette once again, we also can add a tolerance to that as well. So if I add 50mm to the left, 50mm to the right and allow 50mm to the top, we can see that the wall hole has changed once again to reflect those changes and yet the door width and door height 
they're still staying the same. So my door leaf is still 900 by 2 meters, and that unit is actually 960 by 230, and that's sitting in a hole in the wall of 1060 by 2080. So let's have a look at that now. So there it is in the floor plan, and there it is in elevation. And the actual way that that's been dimensioned is very clear as well. We can see the gaps and we can see the way the door is sitting in there with those tolerances. And the nice thing about it, Archicad will still schedule the door as the original size, which is the 900 by 2 meters door. Next, we can put a casing on the inside or outside. Once again, a very clear interface to it. We can see the casing. Now we can place casings on both sides and the casing that comes around doesn't go past the frame of the door so that's just the way it sits. We can also change the threshold type to off, normal, extended and extended both sides. We can also change the dimensions of that in one of the next dialog boxes. So I'm just going to turn that back to off. So if I just check the casing out and casing in so it's actually got some casing there under the pens or materials page we have this 2D detail level scale sensitive or detailed I can have it on detailed all the time and show the additional detail in the 1 to 100 plan however if I have it on scale sensitive and push OK we can see that it looks the same in the 1 to 100 view however if I change the 1 to 10 let's just say we can see that there is additional details available if I want to look at the drawing in, in, at a greater scale this ensures that when you're printing a 1 to 100 you don't have big black ink blobs there and as you go to a higher scale you've got less work to do because you don't have to draw as many lines also new for version 10 is this new ganging feature this allows us to place doors and windows for that matter next to each other and this feature will automatically remove the unnecessary timber framing that is adjoining to the next window or door so for example if I left mouse click on here it's going to delete the woodwork from this side of the door and we can see that there's no woodwork there so now I can actually grab this and edit mirror a copy and we can see that there is no timber work in there so if I just go to that elevation we can see looks correct and if I go to the 3D window we can see that they've joined quite nicely if I was to turn that ganging function off this is what it would look like next we have three options regarding the cavity closure we have none traditional and prefabricated we can also, if this button here is checked, we also can check the custom reveal and we can put a slanted reveal on it. We also have another drop down in the general settings to define this, but I'm just going to left mouse click back to the standard there. Next we're going to go to the frame and leaf settings. Here we define the door jam style. There's three styles to choose from and we can define the timber sizes in each of those styles and also the thickness of the leaf once again over here we can also make the door open towards the outside or towards the inside and we can also make the frame the same thickness of the wall regardless of the wall that you put the door in frame element joinery over here when we place the door the corners can have a mitered join I'll just do this quickly or we can have a butt joint. So I'm just going to push OK, place another door. Now if I go Control 3 and I zoom into those doors, we can see on the left hand side here we've got the butt joint, butt joint over there as well, and on the right hand side here we've got the mitered joints. This makes for a more accurate model when we're rendering, um, so it can be quite handy. Just going to delete those doors once again. Open my door palette by left mouse clicking twice on it. Then 
we can also set up the materials for the frame and leaf there as well then I can change the elevation and opening I can change the height of the the transom I can change the open angle in 3d and 2d and I can also have opening lines in 3d so if I check that we can see the opening line that'll appear in 3d as well it can be dashed or we can have no line as well we can have the line type sitting on the inside and outside of the door and similar sorts of styles there and the line style style too is like the Australian style where the where the dash line goes towards the door handle or style one is where the dash line goes to the hinges I'm going to leave that on Australian style and we can also have the door cast shadows as well as I keep scrolling through I can actually put a door handle on the door there's a number of styles there. there's 13 different styles there and we can also change the height of the door handle and also the positioning from the edge of the door if the door is just a plain door with no grill this stuff is all grayed out and as I change the door panel more and more options become available so in the HV grid door I can actually change the number of horizontal panels and vertical panels and I can change the thickness of the mullions very smart doors we can actually have the grid showing on the outside inside or on both sides then another new feature of version 10 is this French door panel where if we push OK and drop one of these doors into a wall we go to the 3D window I'm just going to zoom out a little there and if I select that door there's hot spots all over it so if I left mouse click on those hot spots I can move that down depending on how many grids you have there horizontal and vertical divisions we can move those anywhere we like in 3D so it's quite easy to change those around if you've got a specific door you're trying to model so if I close that go back to my door panel here we can define the transom we can put mullions in it have a grid in there once again define that casing this is a very neat interface that that allows us to define the casings very quickly if I want casings just on the outside we can change the sizes of the casing and the width of the timber and how it sits in the door the casing will only come up to the door on both sides it won't go th all the way through come just comes up butts up to the frame and we have quite a bit of control over the timber sizes in every part of that frame materials are also divided into inside and outside the threshold we can also change the type of threshold um, to the normal extended one side and I can change the length of it there so if I change that to 100 for example and I go to the floor plan we'll be able to see that now and if I make it extended both sides I might change that to 150 just to exaggerate it, and we can see how it's turned up there so I'm just going to go back put it back to off and we can also put shutters on the door and if, as soon as I click one of these a number of options come up once again for the shutter style and you can play around with that yourself it's just a matter of reading it and the cavity closure custom reveal this is where we we're talking about angling the reveal on the inside of the wall so for example if I wanted to use that I have to click on this option here check the custom reveal box and then choose the slanted reveal and over here we can define the angles of each reveal and from the top and from the side new for version 10 also is a choice of five masonry arches so it's just a matter of choosing those and then this becomes available once again and the different options marry up to the actual type of masonry arch that we select 
and that goes through all our drop downs there just a quick rundown on them all so now we're going to collapse that then under floor plan and section here we define what the doors will look like in the floor plan and through section we have all the display options which I've been through on other movies on this DVD and the symbol and outline once again we can choose the pen types pen colors and pen types for what it will look like in floor plan and even when we cut through the window we have a lot of control over all the pens line weights and pen types and so I'm just going to collapse that because I don't want to repeat myself too much then under model I can use the objects materials which is defined up here in the parameters or I can just use a global setting which would be this material here and I can just change that to any material I like but it's obviously better to use the materials that are set up in the parameters and the wall opening material we can define the same as the wall edge or same as the wall side under reveal if we click the reveal button up here all this becomes highlighted and I can change all these parameters they're fairly self-explanatory if it's not selected it's all grayed out then we have the dimension marker and under the dimension marker we can either have no marker and a choice of basic markers that are already in ARCHICAD you can also make your own markers I can also choose a door marker that's already in there and as soon as you click that the marker settings come up which is the dialog box it's just automatically opened up the marker settings here we can choose different geometry different content and a whole heap of variables we're going to talk about marking windows and doors in another movie on this DVD and then the listing labeling we're also going to talk about that in another movie as well the one last thing I wanted to do with doors was place a couple of doors into a slanted wall first of all if I just do a standard door left mouse click and I might just place two doors to the back and two doors to the front now if I go to the 3D window we can see that they all look quite different now first of all if I select this door and open its parameters up we'll see that it's a vertical door and if I select the next one we can see that this is also vertical but it won't matter if I change it associated to wall because I've inserted it on the vertical wall at the back over here if I grab this and change this door to associated with to the wall it will change and sit back in line with the, the wall this final one if I wanted to make that look okay and cover the gap there all I have to do is put a casing on it so I just open that door up again and I'll just close that go to casing and just put a casing on the door and then at least it will be filled in so there's a number of alternatives in placing doors in a slanted wall